if you're just tuning in right now, this is the touchline on Y25. A very, very good afternoon. And welcome to the bro program. Join the drill via, you know, being part of the show as well. Contribute to what we're talking about right about now. Of course, is matters round 13 of Kenyan Premier League preview. Several fixers are lined up this particular weekend. But remember today, only a single tie beating FC Leopards against Viga United happening this particular afternoon from 3 p.m. East African time at Thika municipal stadium and we speak Gormaya football club are on top of the log closely followed by the slam boys of madara united 2008 kpl champions and of course joining me on set right now is a man who played for madara united that's ronald okoth to delve into what's happening and what we likely to expect as far as uh, top flight fixtures as Concerned. Simon Sepe Mulama, former Kenya International, quite unfortunate he can't make to be with us this particular afternoon, but hopefully next weekend he will be on set together with us. Ronald Okot, good to have you on board. How have you been? Uh, thank you. Pleasure to be on board. Pleasure to be on board. But now, FC Leopards again as Vika Un United, the single fixture this particular afternoon happening at Thika Municipal Stadium. Yeah. What are your expectations? I think it will be a tough match because it will be, it will be like a, a mini derby. Both teams are coming from the Western region and Viga are also on a good roller coaster ride. Though FC Leopards have been shaky. So I think Viga will come, will, come will, will be the better side. Looking at the FC side that they are facing, it's a bit shaky. A lot of maybe they, they're not be playing well. The coach is still looking for his first 11 and all that. So I think Viga have the upper hand even though they are, they are, they are waiting. Dennis Kitambi, a man who is in charge of FC Leopards, after yeah. of course the team parted ways with Robert Matano, has been praised by the pundits who believe that probably is the man who deserves, you know, uh, taking FC to another level, but with reports indicating that he's yes, on yeah. his way out of the den yeah. to join, you know, Stewart Hall, a man they were with together in Tanzania and League abroad. What do you make of uh, that kind of shift in terms of managerial leadership? I think if you look at FC Leopard's history with coaches, they really have had a lot of coaches in the, in the recent past. So I think uh, them losing Kitambi, it won't be a good move. So if I were them, they'd maybe come up with a better contract for him and tie him under long and a long-term contract because if you look at the way he's coaching, the way he's composed, even the last game they played that they drew one one, one all. I think uh, if you can compare him with other coaches, he's, he's more calm, he's more composed, he knows what he's doing. So I think he should just be given time, and FC Leopards should maybe time with a longer a, a long-term contract. We've seen teams getting promoted to top tier, and you know. Uh, uh, Pulling a surprise, you see, performing contrary to expectations of many. Remember the four teams that got uh, promoted last season, that is Kariobank, Sharks in the Football Club, Nakumat FC, and Zuki Richo. All of them were not relegated, and all of them remained in top flight. And Viga United, uh, as well, is not doing bad. Of course, 15th yeah. on the log as we speak. Maybe what has been the secret behind you know, these teams which are getting promoted to the top tier from or the NSL? I think what has been around that then NSL, the NSL league is much more tougher than the KPL, <laughs> which is true by the way because I played in the NSL. Teams there are very fit, they are very fast. The boys that are playing in the NSL, they are ambitious, the people want to prove a point. So the moment when they get their breakthrough into the Kenya Premier League, they always want to prove a point. So I think it's obvious that teams in the NSL are much more fitter with no disrespect to the KPL clubs, but the NSL is a, bit, it's a tough league and it's also it's competitive it's competitive it's tight a lot of fixtures so i think the players mo most of them are fit so if you look at the recent teams that have that have been promoted most of them have performed well even wazito with all their financial constraints and all that they're performing i think exemplary well so i think it's something to do with the nsl being a tougher league and you know kpl I think it's the peak. Most players, you know, they're relaxed. Most of them are in their comfort zone. So I think that's why you can see maybe Tasca being beaten five by a team that has been promoted and also Azito beating Madare and all that. So I think it's all about NSL being a bit more tough and tight. Join the conversation and be part of the program by double two one six two starting with the word touch. What do you think about twenty eighteen KPL title bid? Is it for Gormaya to lose? Of course they are being tipped and uh, being given that edge of them being favourites to be crowned champions for the seventeenth record time. But speaking exclusively to Gormaya Football Club chairperson Ambrose Racheri, nice claims that you know Gormaya are looking forward to being, you know. Uh, crowned champions of 2017-2018 KPL season saying that you know it's competitive and any team can win it though he's not ruling out possibility of Gormaya winning it 
again after being crowned champions last season. I'm talking about Gurmaya Football Club. They are playing a team you played uh, for before. They are playing Madara United tomorrow at Kenyatta Stadium in Machakos County. Gurmaya has been in high-flying form, of course, being motivated by their qualification to the group stage of CAF Confederations Cup, being the first Kenyan team to do that. Do you think that will be key to their blistering performance? It, it will be a good match because pitting Gurma and Madar, if you look at the recent, they, they are head-to-head. -head. Madar has been, uh, according to me, Madar has been on the upper hand. And uh, I used to say that the Madar United has the key to Gormaya. So I know I expect a tough game. I know Madar, will, I'm sure Madar will be the first team to break Gormaya's winning stick. So I'm looking forward to Madar win tomorrow. The new sensation, Cliff Nyakea, he's been also in good scoring form. He scored uh, some good goals for the Slam Boys of Madara United so far. And Robert Kimanzi, the tactician for Madara United, has steeped him to be, you know, a boy who will do marvelously well as far as Kenyan football is concerned. What do you make of his uh, attacking prowess ahead of the time? Uh, f funny enough, Nyakea has featured for Gormaya before in the yes. Gormaya team. So when he made a move to Madara United, I think Kimanzi saw a lot of potential in him. Yes. And he's really maturing up because I think this is his second season in the Premier League. The first season he was a bit shaky, but if you look at the way Nyakea is playing right now, I expected even him to be called in the national team because he's a young lad, he's more hungry, he's ambitious, he's scoring goals left, right, center. Even the play of the month, I really expected it, I really expected it to go to Nyakea, but maybe due to one reason or the other, they didn't get it. But I think he's maturing up, he's becoming a good player, and uh, I normally call him the KDB, Kevin De Bruyne of <laughs> Kenya football, because they play exactly the same, the same way. So I think Nyakea is a good player, and he's destined for greatness. Thika United, uh, you know, fighting the relegation battle and being coached by former international Nicolas Muyot. They are facing Zoya Football Club tomorrow, and Zoya is also a team that, you know, uh, got promoted last season, but uh, they were lucky and fortunate enough not to be relegated. And they have also been performing uh, very well. What do you think about that clash? Thika United has not been lucky during the recent years. They have been facing a lot of relegation battles, just like City Stars used to do, until <laughs> yes. finally they got relegated. But uh, Muyot is a good coach, and I believe he's trying to build something with the squad that he has. Because also Thika United, if you look at Thika United, they really believe in recruiting the younger lads. People have not played in the Premier League. People are ready to prove a point. So I think year in, year out. And also uh, another thing that are maybe has been the downfall, they've been losing a lot of good players. Because a player comes in for Thicker United, plays a season, and then maybe leaves. Maybe he gets another better offer. So it will be a tough clash. And also on Zoya is a, it's not a, an easy team to play against. So it will be, it will be a, a relatively tough duel. To and Zoya Football Club has been, you know, compared to Southampton, in English Premier League because it's been, you know, some sort of a raiding center in terms of the opponents who have financial muscles, you know, yeah. acquiring their players because it's been raided and uh, parted ways with several influential players, but still intact. What do you make of uh, uh, that tendency or habit of, you know, teams, especially those high profile clubs, raiding the so called minos in terms of acquiring their talented? Superstars. It's a good question, and uh, I was also saying some time back that uh, financial, the, your financial, the mi financial muscle power. Because if you look at teams like Gormaya, Tasca, FC Leopards, they have a lot of financial power. Yes. And when it comes to competitiveness, with maybe signing other players, it's much more easier for them to tap players and bring in into the clubs. If you look at a team like maybe Nzoia, they're performing well, yes, but you can't compare their financial power muscle compared to the likes of Gormaya. That's why we saw them losing a lot of players to rivals, rival clubs like Gormaya. So I think it's also high time maybe more we should get more sponsors so that at least there can be co real competition in the league. Because right now, if we look at it, it's maybe a one, two horse rates between Gormaya, maybe... I can't say FC Leopards because they're not performing well. Yes. And yeah, they're so not consistent as they, well. They're not consistent. So I think it also comes down to maybe the teams having a lot of financial muscle, muscle in them. And that's why lots of these teams are losing their players to better teams. Even if you look at Madari, Madari have, have recently lost very good players to more bigger teams because of money. Yeah. And Task FC? After acquiring the services of Robert Matano as their tactician, he inspired them to a title crown in 2013. And remember, he's the one who enabled Sofa Parker uh, during their debut season in top flight in 2009, winning for them KPL title. And he's, you know, indicated that 
he, he will be making a stylish comeback in terms of mm. performance and even rejuvenating yeah. the performance of Task FC, 11 time KPL champions. Do you think he will be a force to reckon with? And even as he keeps saying that he has to punish FC Leopard, who parted yeah. ways with him, yeah. you know, after even enabling them to win Go TV. I think. Uh, Matano going to Tasca, it was a good move according to me. Because even if you look at his assistant coach, yes. Mr. Okere is a very good technical and tactical coach. So I think Matano, when Matano plays a lot of, his style of play is f more physical and direct football. And then if you, if you look at the type of assistant coach he's brought in, he's a more tactical and technical coach. So I think blending in the two types of coaches into one team and then you look at a team like Tasca also signed a lot of new players mixing in with the experienced players so I think we are about to see a new side of Tasca Football Club. Let's talk about Sofapaka against Wazito FC. Sofapaka is a team that has been condemned and accused of you know uh, concentrating so much on the attacking department of course acquiring Steven Waruru from military side who leans his stars acquiring former uh, and uh, actually it's current Kenyan international Kevin Kimani also acquiring Elias Yeche from Kariobangi Sharks a team that is related to KF president Nick Mwendwa but yeah. despite you know having acquired those all players and even Kefa Swani yeah. uh, who formerly played for FC Leopards and recently Nakuma FC the cash strapped side and you know they have been uh, not performing very well their coach resigning citing personal reasons and now one of their former players John Barasa is at the helm as the tactician do you think uh, tomorrow as even the face was it FC Franco Una's side they will probably you know trying to forget about their previous predicament in terms of awful show in the league uh, so for Paka, according to me, they sign very well. They sign very good experienced players, the likes of Asiache, Kitawi, Aswani. So maybe I can compare them to Liverpool. Yes. Yeah. They, they, they're showing some signs of maybe winning the league or maybe going far. But again, you know, if you look at their current form, they've been, out, they, they've be, they've been having a roller coaster side, a roller coaster type of season. And I think them playing against Wazito, it won't be an easy match because Ouna too is a coach that wants to prove something in the league. True. He was in Sofapa, he, he was in, sorry, he was in Gormaya and then he quit and now he's come back again with a new side. So it won't be an easy match and Wazito are also playing good football at the moment, even though they don't have a lot of financial power as compared to Sofapaka. But uh, I think Sofa. So for Paco, I'll carry the day. Tomorrow. I remember them playing against Gormaya and they lost by one nil and they tried yeah. so much. And it's a team that, you know, has risen through the ranks, getting promoted from NSL, finishing second yeah. in the log last season and, you know, closely affiliated with the University of Nairobi alumni coming together to form the team that now is getting to another level football wise. Do yeah. you think it can pull it's, an upset? It, it, it's a team that has a lot of potential and I think we should just give them this season only so that they can adapt to the league. Yes. Come next season, God willing, I know we are going to see an, a different side of Wazito, a more experienced, but because they've already played in the league. So I think next season they will be a, a good side to reckon with come into the league. Poster Rangers against Kariobangi Sharks. Poster Rangers are bragging of services of a man who handed Kenya the national team around the Stars Ekafa Senior Challenge Cup last season. That is Patrick Matasi after his heroic saves. Yeah. But uh, also having acquired the services of Danson Cargo. Do you think the his impact has been felt? Uh, in and Osborne Mand as well? Yeah, I think it, it has been felt because if you look at their recent form, I've, I've watched them train a couple of times and they're decent side. They really signed well and uh, they're currently playing, a, they're, they're playing also good football. And uh, if you look at the types of players they signed, they brought into the team the likes of, we call him a gogo, the, the big striker. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, them play, their match, I, let me just say they're, they're a good side. They are good side and yeah. being led by experienced tactician Sami Pams Yeah, like Sami Pams Omol. And then they are facing a Karobang shark that is being led by Mr. Muluya, who is also a very tac tactical and technical coach. Yes. So I think we are, going to, we are going to see total football between the two sides. Total football between the two sides. Can we attribute lack of, you know, or scoring uh, spree? at the Kariobangi Sharks to, you know, the departure of one Masood Juma who joined Cape Town City, a team that, you know, participates in South African Vodacom Premier League because we haven't seen much of the goals being scored and uh, we are yet to witness the uh, attacking department being lethal in terms of scoring goals. Yeah, With Masood Juma uh, departure, 
uh, enable the team to suffer a huge setback? No, I don't think Masoud Juma departure going to South Africa really left a lot of impact into the team because I think the new boy who's who was brought in has been doing a lot of work. Eric Kapaito. Kapaito, yeah. And also me being there, I've been, I've been a striker and I know when there's a goal drought, there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Strikers are not scoring and all that. So I think they're just going through that moment where maybe the goals have run dry and they should go back to the drawing board. I've also seen them train at Camp Toyo and they're really working on their finishing. I think they're going to, through that period where the goals have run out and they just need to go back to the drawing board and maybe need to tighten up those holes and start putting them goals behind the net. Will it start against Jamie Lee? Uh, that's, uh, that's a dead rubber. <laughs> that's a very tough match because both teams are maybe Ulinzi, we know Ulinzi to be a more defensive and physical side. Yes. And Chairman Ulinzi is more defensive. And uh, Ulinzi, I think Ulinzi have the upper hand if, if you look at their, their, their pedigree. But also Chemel is a side that is also on, uh, on, on a rise. So Ulinzi, and pulling a surprise against Gurmaya. Yeah, so people, people <laughs> never expected that. Fixture yeah, so at Moe Stadium in Kisumu uh, County. Coming from behind to, to equalize, yeah, to equalize. To all draw. So, yeah, they've, they've, show, they've shown a statement. They, they've made a statement. And I think they are set to reckon with that at the same time. So any team that is playing against, is playing Chemelil should be wary of their attack side. And the Ulinzi, do you think even the departure of Samuel Onyango, he joined Gurmaya Football Club, Stephen Waruru, he also left for... Uh, so far, Parker. You know, there has been this perception outside there that you know some teams are doing lucratively well in terms of even paying their players and uh, ensuring that their remuneration welfare is well taken care of. But we've seen players, you know, yeah. moving from those clubs, even at Task FC, where we hear on the street that players get paid at around 18th. And uh, you see, there seems like no motivation at the club because we saw. Exodus of players last season, Alan Wanga, Noah Fuller, yeah. uh, James Situma, all joining the Kakamega homeboys. What do you make of the same? Uh, I think when it comes to Tasca, it was a lot of, okay, many people said it was a lot, it was controversial, controversial when they left, let go of those quality players that they had. And also, if you look at uh, Ulinzi, Ulinzi, I don't think uh, they, they, Ulinzi, okay, year in, year, in, year out, they've been losing a lot of players, but funny enough, I don't know where they get their players from. Maybe, <laughs> in the, maybe in the military, because the players they recruit in are all, also also come in with a lot of experience and a lot of. And even as a killer to my left, yeah, leopards. Yeah, so I think uh, maybe most of them. Okay, according to me, maybe most of them were not handed the permanent jobs. Contracts. That, yeah, contracts that they expected. So that's why mo some of them left. For the likes of Waruru, maybe he left because he has maybe his personal ambitions. Yes. When it's come to maybe following his dream, pursuing his career in football. But uh, still, uh, Ulinzi is a decent side. Ulinzi is such a decent side. Talk to us about Nakumat FC against Bandari. Good news that uh, uh, Nakumat FC uh, have gotten a person who is willing to buy them, a politician, a man who contested in uh, Embakasi Easter's seeking to get elected parliament. That's Francis Murray. The rumors yeah. arrive that he will be. Uh, I get, it will be unveiled soon as the you know own official owner of the club. Do you think that now will be a big boost as far it's, as motivation of the players? It is, yeah, it is a big boost because Nakumat has been suffering financially and even it was the, it was on the brink of falling falling apart yes. altogether. But I think this man has come in at the right time when the boys really needed him. And I heard somewhere that uh, he's offered to pay all the debts that the club owed the players, starting for all the way from last season. So. The, it's a, it's a it's a big boost to Nakumat, and uh, I even heard they're going to change the name from Nakumat maybe to something. Yes. So I, I know you're expecting to see a different Nakumat. The boys know they they have now the 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 they are more the psych. They, they they have the psych. They are more encouraged. You know, then uh, they are ready to go out and play. So the man coming in to save Nakumat at the last minute, it's a huge it's a huge huge booster. And by the way, with good news as far as Kenyan football is concerned, Sport Pesa is back. It's renewed yeah. uh, their sponsorship for four football entities, KPL, uh, Gormaya, and their rivals, FC Leopards, alongside Football Kenya Federation. And now Nakumat looking set to acquire a new owner who is uh, 
being compared to Sheikh Mansour <laughs> of Manchester City. Are you looking forward to a situation where now we will come back and play football? Because fruits <laughs> are finally being witnessed. Light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, there's light at the end of the tunnel finally. <laughs> and it's a big reprieve for most clubs because at the end of the day, people are, the, the clubs are going to get a little some some grants from Sport Pesa sponsorship. So we won't be hearing a lot of cries here and there of players not being played, maybe players not being given the allowances, because I know this grant, the grant that will come from the sponsorship will trickle into these clubs and maybe I can just encourage in more, sponsor, more sponsors to come on board so that I, we can change our football. Overall, uh, KPL title bid, do you think it's for Gormaya to lose this season? Uh, it's for Gormaya to lose, <laughs> hands down, because if you look at... <laughs> No decision, but they don't have. They, they, there's no competition when you maybe serious co opponent. Yeah, serious opponents. Because if you look at Gormaya, they sign every good player, every quality player that they can. If your club has a quality player, they'll come for him. And you know, when Gormaya comes calling, you can't say no. So and they've been doing that year in, year out. That's why you see the likes of Fulinzi losing their best players, Madari losing their best players, even some coming from FC Leopards to Gormaya here. So I think uh, we need some fair play when it comes to maybe teams signing, teams being allowed to sign a number of players, maybe a number of quality players, or maybe also, or, or, or if it's not fair play, then I think we need something like all clubs should have the same level of playground. Because it, if you f look at a team maybe like, not disrespect, but a team like Chemelil. Yes. If Chemelil goes for a player like uh, maybe a player that has been playing on, in Gormaya first 11, I know he can't make a move to Chamberlain mm. because of, at the end of the day, because of the, fina the, 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 the finances. The cash. Yeah, so I think we need to inject in more cash into our club so that every club can have a fair level of playground where they can sign all the quality players that they like and yeah, they can battle for the league. But currently, I think it's Gormaya's title to lose. I've, I've talked to stakeholders of Kenyan football before. Lord Vikaduda was on the show last week, CEO of Gormaya Football Club, and he was saying that Gormaya goes for quality. And even if it's a player, you know, uh, from an overseas country, he has to be, you know, even uh, playing for their respective national team and decided the likes of Medi Kagere, yeah. Godfrey, Walusimbi, several players whom Gormaya are currently boasting of and at their national stage, yeah. they're also actively involved in matters national assignments. Do you think that is the way other Kenyan uh, local clubs should go if they have to compete against Gormaya? I don't think it's the way because if you if you want to look, if you want to follow that we will be locking out we'll be locking out a lot of talent, talent raw talent that have not been tapped. So yeah it's uh, it's up to Gormaya to sign it's it's according to their policy. They want to sign quality players which is okay it's just a, it's a characteristic of these big clubs. They go for established names because in Gormaya you never hear something like trials. You'll be signed immediately, you'll be given your down payment, and you'll start your work. So I think uh, maybe it's good that they're going for quality because we need to, to also improve our league. But at the same time, I think it will be locking out a lot of raw talent because over the years they've been crying that they sign a lot of foreign players at uh, using a lot of cash, and we also have our own players who can do the same work. So I think it's a 50-50. And I think Gormaya has put in place some proper scouting system because we've seen them acquiring players who are not in the knowledge of public domain before, but when they come to the limelight, they sparkle as if, you know, they have been there, they have vast experience. I think, can we attribute that to their proper scouts? Yeah, they are proper scouts and it's something all clubs should, should learn from because, you know, every season they have, they have a tour that they go, they, they travel up country so that they can play. They, they they organize friendly matches up country. So every against year grassroots against teams. grassroots teams. So in those grass, grassroots teams, th that is where they tap in the raw talent that they have, and they bring in a lot of foot, a lot a lot of players who've not who've not played in the league but are quality players. That's why we are seeing them making their names. So it's something maybe most clubs should follow. A big milestone, Hull City, a team that took part in English Premier League and now currently participating in the championship, visiting the country next month and they will be playing either FC Leopards or Gormaya on May 13th at Timu International Sports Centre, Kasarani Stadium. What are your expectations? What are you looking forward to? Uh, it's, should it's we expect a scenario where one or two Kenyan players will sparkle and get noticed <laughs> by the English side? It's, it's, it's a good move by, the, by our sponsors to bring in Al City, but at, I, I think at the same time it's not good. So that You know we have two big teams in our country. Yes. I think it's disrespect. It's dis disrespectful when 
you pit two big clubs to play against each other so that they can maybe play a, a Hull City that maybe has brought a reserve side. So I think, uh, to, be, to, be, to be fair, the two teams should play Hull City, even maybe on a different date. But pitting Gormai against FC Leopard so that the winner can go and play maybe a, a Hull City that maybe we, we don't even know if they'll bring the real Hull City first 11 <laughs> or maybe the reserve side. The likes side of that, Mabel Hernandez. Yeah, they say, they say the, 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 the same thing they did to us when we. Sent, old stars. Yeah, <laughs> we sent our best only to get there so that uh, to play with the reserve side. So I think we should also know our quality. We should also de 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 we should also demand the best. So maybe I think it would have been better if maybe Hull City would have played Gormaya and then FC Leopard so that you can know who has the bragging right. And do you think such uh, you know platforms and opportunities will be given to you know the budding players, the upcoming talent so that you know they can get exposed mm -hmm. at the big stage rather than giving you know the players we used to because already mm -hmm. they have gotten that you know uh, high profile chance to I'm mingle with the best no i'm one person who believes in maybe work for something yes yeah go work for something so that you deserve it don't be given something because of your age maybe because of your because you're young and all that if you're young you go and play with the best, play with the more experienced players, prove it that you're best and get the opportunity to play against the maybe whoever you want to play to play to play against. So I think the coach who the coaches who will be responsible for managing their teams during that day should just choose the be, their best players, irrespective of their age, irrespective of their experience and all that. So it's it, it, the, the coaches should just pick the best teams, despite the age and all that. Ronald Oko, thank you for coming through and sharing with us your uh, expectations as far as round 13 of KPL fixtures lined up this particular weekend is concerned. Always a pleasure having you on board. Oh, thank you. This is the touchline on Y254. My name is Max Olwasiko. Of course, up next is some sort of World Cup profile with focus on Germany defending champions who are looking forward to win it consecutively and become the first time winning it second time running let's take a look and see what they have in store ahead of russia edition just a few months from now as we speak but remember the fan favorite segment the fans on coming later on and we'll be discussing matters international football arsenal against man united tomorrow and remember midweek uefa and europa league fixtures liverpool beating roma will roma uh, overturn the deficit like they did against the Spanish Giants, Barcelona, and Real Madrid being Bayern Mun beating Bayern München 2 1. Some pundits already thinking that it will be a Liverpool Madrid final affair in Kiev. What do you think? Stay tuned and don't go away. But remember, 22162 is our SMS line.